Uh, aloha, friends and family. What's going on with you wonderful, beautiful people today? Uh, if this is your first time to a Cusco video, this is uh, the one video a week that we don't edit, we don't cut. We just put a little intro. <laughs> Today I've been asked to make a video, and I've been asked this many times to make a video about how and why I feed frozen thawed to my ball pythons. And I have not fed a live animal here to our snakes since 2016, maybe? It's been a while, it's been years. And the reason that I do that is, there's a couple reasons. A, I'm not gonna be breeding rodents. I do not wanna breed rodents. My wife does not want me to breed rodents. And between the two of us not wanting it, it's not, it's not happening. I, I would go to the pet store and grab live animals in the past if I felt like I needed to, but literally years have gone by since I've fed a frozen thought, since I've fed a live animal to any of the snakes. So it, it definitely can be done. None of my snakes have starved. Some of them have stopped eating for a while. And this is one key that I will always tell people that ask me how and what are the techniques to feeding frozen thought. Patience is a huge key, especially with ball pythons. They are notoriously picky feeders. I can understand if you're maybe producing like 50 clutches plus or any number that is like just not sustainable to try and be that patient with that many baby snakes trying to get them started. I think a lot of people probably throw a little hopper mouse in there and you're just able to just toss it into all the different snakes and chances are they're going to take it because it's live. But then you got to worry about switching them over to rats eventually if you want them to not eat mice their entire life with which ball pythons are very notorious for getting stuck on a certain type of food and being hard to switch them from mice to rats so I know that I want to feed all my animals frozen thawed so I get them started on frozen thawed right from the start and that also helps people to get snakes from me then if they want to be feeding frozen thawed it's not hard for them to switch over um, or have to switch over at all because they're just feeding frozen thawed when they get there not only that, but if they do want to feed live, if they are somebody that feeds live, then it's very easy to switch to live from frozen thought. It's a little harder to go the other direction. So, first step is I set little pinky mice out here. I start them on pinkies, maybe fuzzies, depending on the size of the snake. But I set them out in front of the enclosures so they can thaw it all day so the snakes get excited with the smell happening throughout the day. And then I'll come in later and I'll get some scalding hot water and I'll put in a little tub here. I'm gonna get that tub filled up with some hot, hot water right now, as hot as it comes out of the tap. And then I'll drop four or five of those pinkies in there because the water is so hot that it can actually start to cook the, the prey item. So you don't really want it to be cooked. So I don't want too many sitting in there for too long. Now, when I do turn around to show you guys the feeding process, I'm gonna stop talking because even though snakes don't have open holes for ears, they are still able to pick up the little tiny low tones of my voice. I've seen it happen. I've seen them react to the low tones of my voice before. And it's just, I, as much as I want to talk through the process during feeding, I'm going to get very silent while we're actually offering the prey items because I don't want to disturb the snakes with the low timbre of my voice. Snakes do actually have hearing apparatus inside of their heads, even though they don't have an eardrum. They're able to pick up those vibrations of the low voice, especially my voice later at night. It gets lower. And especially after a couple of glasses of whiskey, it's just the low timbers really start to come out of my voice. So I, that's not what I want. Don't want to disturb the snake. So I'll tell you right off the bat, this isn't the first time I'm offering these guys frozen thawed. Some of these snakes, actually these particular two clutches that we're going to feed tonight, none of them took on the first offering of frozen thawed. Which is again, the thing that I will beat into a dead pulp of a horse every time is that patience, patience, Patience is key if you really want to get your animal started on frozen thawed. These animals absorb yolk out of their egg. They don't need to eat right away, right off their first shed. It's not necessary for their survival. They can last a long time. Pythons are masters of energy conservation. They can go for very, very long periods without food and be perfectly healthy. So the one thing that I think people run into the most is their own impatience. And that's the biggest challenge is, is them being impatient and wanting to get their animal started on food. Now, if, if it gets to a point where the animal is not taking frozen thought for a while, there's a technique you can do with assist feeding with a rat tail that works very, very well. But I try to hold off on that because I don't, you know, you're stressing them out a little bit when you do that. And if I can avoid them having to feel that stress associated with feeding time, that's all the better. So again, getting the, ro the rodent to a high enough temperature, very crucial. Got our hot water ready to go over here. Go set it on my handy dandy 
tray here, and I won't use this water technique forever. As soon as Freedom Breeder hurries up and gets that rodent oven into production, I will be using that rodent oven. Come on, guys. Let's make it happen. There's a lot of us out here waiting for it. I know you guys are busy, but... Tick, 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 tick. So, until then, I'm using hot water. So let's go ahead and drop a few in there, and I'm going to get real quiet in just a second. But... Oh, man. The... I never really enjoy doing this with one hand. That's the other thing. One thing I'll definitely recommend is if you can do it with two hands and, and not be holding the camera at the same time, you're doing pretty good. So I just drop them in there, let them build up a little temperature real quick, and then we'll go in and we'll very slowly, with tongs, bring the snake the rat. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll feed the snake the rat. Hopefully they want it. Pull the tub out really slowly, slow, gentle. You don't want a lot of noise in the room. You want it to be calm. In fact, all the talking I've been doing right now, I, I prefer to have not done that, but it wouldn't be a very good video if I just sat here and was like. So, but. <sighs> Back to using the DSLR, so I'm a little out of breath already holding this thing. It's freaking heavy, man. Using that cell phone is definitely awesome. Um, I think the rat's hot enough now. Now, there was one other technique I was going to mention besides just coming in slowly. Um, yeah, just try to grab the rat in a spot where, it, like, right behind the neck, kind of like the, the scruff of the neck. Make it look alive as possible. Have it going slowly. Don't rush it in there and shove it in the, in the snake's face. Kind of let them come to the, the rat. And you just read the snake's body language as you're offering the prey item to them. Let them come to the rat if possible you know don't don't if you rush it up into their face you're going to scare them and a scared snake is not going to want to eat because it's frightened for its life and when they do eat they're very vulnerable they've got a rodent in their mouth it's their only defense mechanism as far as you know teeth is, is being used up for that process so if they're scared they're not going to want to eat so <sighs> i feel like there's one more thing i want to tell you guys about before we actually bring the rat into the thing so it's got got the heat uh, snakes in there. I got them on cocoa blocks. I got them in those FB5 tubs that's nice and tight and a little small space for them to be in because snakes are very much appreciate a, a small space. Uh, something that's hard for a lot of people to comprehend with, with keeping snakes and um, you know a lot of people anthropomorphize the idea of having because I would love to live in a mansion like you know it would be great and have a big old space but snakes just aren't like that. They like little tiny small spaces that they're comfortable in there. So, not that, not that getting them out for exercise is a bad thing. The other thing I try to do very little is handle them until they're eating solidly. You know, let, let them have their own space until they're ready. And I still feel like there was one more thing I wanted to tell you guys about before we bring the rats over there. But maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it's just time to do it. Let's do it. One down, success. I don't know why he had a swing and a miss there. He kind of went past the haunches, but I do remember what I was going to tell you guys. And then I forgot it again. Oh, it's that these lights are way brighter than I usually have them. So that's one concern, but it wouldn't be a very good video if it was dark. So I, I do like to get the lights as dim as possible when I'm doing this usually, but for the purpose of the video, I've turned them up as bright as possible. So it's awesome that that first snake took here. Let's go for number two.
<laughs> you see how ready that guy was? See, having the rats sitting outside the enclosure thawing all day definitely helps getting them enticed and, and ready to eat. So that's a big help. All right, let's go for number three. Oh, come on, Cusco. We'll come back to that snake. I don't know what the hell she was doing up there. <laughs> Silly snake. All right, get another rat. Oh, you missed. There you go. Yeah. Dude, we are looking good, guys. I'm telling you, this patience pays off. Like these guys are, these guys are doing fantastic now. All right, let's let's go back to that snake that was doing weird flipping around stuff. Yes! Ah, oh, <laughs> that feels good, man. I'll tell you, other than the benefits of being able to feed frozen thawed, not having to keep live rodents around or having to breed rodents, just the feeling of, of watching all those snakes. That's all, that was one clutch right there. All taken frozen thawed off the tongs successfully, and it feels so good it's so worth it if, if you ever want to feel accomplished with raising baby snakes getting them all started on frozen thought it's the feeling of accomplishment is just fantastic i owe a lot of credit to the snakes but also to my own patience which again patience is the key patience that is the number one key to getting your ball python started on frozen thought items all right guys well I hope that you enjoyed this video today. We'll see you on Saturday for uh, the last video here before we head off to Utah with uh, Clint and Dave. So, oh, you know what? I just found out Garrett's meeting is out there too. So, it should be a good trip. All right, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And <laughs> see you on Saturday. Aloha.